What's going on, y'all? KM Best here, still evacuated, here with a deck that is sure to make your opponents want to evacuate as well. Let's take a look at the wildest Galactus build I have ever played. I had a 69% win rate with it. Yes, I'm rounding up a bit from 68 point something, but frankly, just put nice in the comments. You gotta give me that. Now, I did a little bit of digging around, and I found that the person who originally put this list together, as far as I'm aware, was TLSG, a friend of the channel, and a devious deck builder who, despite being an incredibly nice person, plays consistently the most evil decks on the entire planet. It really could not be more of a contrast between the niceness of the person and the evilness of the decks, and I think this deck really gets at the core of being evil, while also maintaining some uniqueness and some interesting strat strategic options that give it a lot more depth than you'd think as a Galactus deck. Now, don't get me wrong, this is kind of a Galactus deck, but before it's that, what this deck really is, is a Psylocke Wiccan, Zabu Wiccan deck. Now, this kind of Wiccan deck sort of never really got off the ground, but it was something that I thought might be an interesting direction for the archetype to go when it first came out. That metagame at that time was a little bit less explosive, a little bit more focused on, you know, weird things, but ultimately things that got answered by Eliath and getting ahead of the curve by playing consistent Wiccans. This metagame is a very explosive metagame. Bounce and Hella, there are so many big points decks that are really able to run you over if you give them enough time. So other styles of Wiccan decks, the more consistent ones, are actually sort of falling off a little bit. This combination of cards, Zabu, Psylocke, Wiccan, gives you some really powerful nut draws. The threat of Galactus is obviously excellent, but you don't have to be a Galactus deck. You can just be a turn three Wiccan, turn four Red Hulk deck. You can just get ahead on the curve and then just use the fact that you cheated a bunch of energy to win the game with or without Galactus. You can also leverage the threat of Galactus in multiple lanes by, say, putting a Hobgoblin in one lane and a Symbiote Spider-Man in another. The excess of energy that this deck can generate also allows you to do things like have eight energy on turn six and play wave, allowing you to play multiple six drops as well. This deck ultimately, while it looks like an absolute pile, and I don't blame you for looking at this and saying, what the hell is this crap? There's a Quicksilver in it. It does manage to accomplish something that the other Wiccan decks in the game don't, and that is add some real explosive power and confusing turn six potential to an archetype that has been sort of one note and stagnating for an extended period of time. Now, I had a 68.2% win rate that I rounded up to 69% in the thumbnail so I could clickbait you. Now that you've gotten here, I hope you appreciate the work I put in as a YouTuber. Quicksilver is a pretty terrible card. You can tell because I'm still using the pixel variant just because I want to express my disdain for this card as much as I possibly can. But Quicksilver into something like a Zabu or a Psylocke into that turn three Wiccan is genuinely kind of unbelievably strong. Like this card is the thing that makes this deck work, even though it is also the thing that makes this deck less consistent. It's great to have a one drop on one and we really can't afford to be the other kind of Wiccan deck the way we're trying to play. But we also very specifically don't like it because it makes us less likely to draw the Psylocke. It makes us less likely to draw the Zabu. And it's the sort of give and take that this deck kind of just has to accept if it wants to be a reasonable deck that is worth playing. Psylocke is part of your nut draw. Zabu, Psylocke, into Wiccan. That's really what you're trying to do after playing that guaranteed Quicksilver. She's a very good card for doing this and pretty bad in almost every other situation. Remember, this is a deck that is looking to do something broken. It's looking to high roll. It's looking to use Galactus as an equalizer against decks that otherwise would go over it if it were a different Wiccan deck trying to high roll in a different way. That means that you just have to accept some of the time you're going to brick. But when you have this stuff, it's about as strong as doing it with Mr. Negative because people just aren't going to be able to deal with what you're able to output in the form of Galactus. 
Jeff is your other two, but he has a lot of sort of hidden utility in a deck like this because he's a two drop that can go into location that you can then play stuff like Symbiote Spider-Man into and not worry about him staying there because you can always move Jeff out of that location. There are also situations where you fuse your Jeff with Symbiote Spider-Man because you would like a 10 power vision. That's a legitimate play that you're going to make in some of your non-Galactus games. And having this sort of flexibility, a card that is good with your Galactus gameplay, a card that is good without your Galactus gameplay, just generically a card you enjoy seeing, because when you have a Jeff in your opening hand, you have Quicksilver into a two drop, and you are like more likely to actually get towards that Wiccan when you can. Jeff is just great here, and I'm not really sure if there's any other card that has the flexibility that he has. I think if you wanted to replace Jeff and there was a third card that could ramp you into that Wiccan on two, that would be a fine replacement, but that card doesn't exist, so we're playing Jeff. Zabu is other Cylon in this deck. It is attempting to be a two-drop that gets you into Wiccan as soon as possible. Now, we've talked a bit about how this deck has similarities to Mr. Negative, and this is one of the overlap points, where you really want to be doing two-drop into four-drop when you can, because A, you're a lot less like You're not exactly consistently built enough to feel good about getting a one, two, three, four curve. It does happen, but honestly, your one, two, threes happen about as much as your one, two, three, fours. And so you end up in some awkward spots because of being built like this. But the upside is you do a lot more with this energy consistently than Mr. Negative does without a Jane Foster. And so it has a similar setup, but you're playing a four, seven, they're playing a four, negative one. They need to draw a bunch of cards. You can just like play a red hook. And so it has a lot of, like, the qualities of a Mr. Negative deck that may apply differently in this case, but if you've played a lot of negative, you should be familiar with your sort of snap and retreat patterns. One of the things that really helps this deck is that both Green Goblin and Hobgoblin are good generally right now. Like, you're happy to be playing those cards. They're pretty damn solid in a general sense right now. And because of that, and I could go into the reasons for that, but mostly the reason is... There isn't a lot of Annihilus, but these are just cards that are good generally, and they're great with Galactus, but you're also just fine to have them in your Wiccan deck, right? And that's the thing that really brings this deck together. Cards like Jeff, cards like Green Goblin, cards like Hobgoblin, they bridge you from your Galactus games to your non-Galactus games. You get to play cards, Jeff, Galactus, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, like not Galactus, but Jeff, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, Eliath, uh, Red Hulk, things like that, you can win games with them. You don't need to only win games with Galactus. You can actually just use those cards in your Wiccan strategy, and they're not that much worse than a dedicated Wiccan deck, if at all. I actually felt like Wave was fairly mediocre for me. I didn't have a lot of Wave into Galactus into 5-6 kind of games, it just never really added up into something like that for me. Part of it is because you're so often very telegraphing that. Like, you put your Quicksilver in one lane, you put your two drop in the same lane, you put your wave in the same lane, and it's like, well, I mean, they know where you're not going, right? Like, it's just kind of, it's a good card that you're able to use well, but it hasn't honestly been that amazing for me. It does have a back-end use after you've played Wiccan of allowing you to play multiple six drops on the final turn of the game with eight energy, making them both four. That is a back-end use that this card has if you're going for a different route. I think that a lot of the time this deck is able to be a better Wiccan deck because of a card like Wave, but not always. Symbiote Spider-Man just got buffed, and he's very, very good. Yes, he has a defined weakness to clog, but he's strong enough that I was able to do multiple plays that involved a Hobgoblin on one lane and a Symbiote Spider-Man on another, and my opponent had to then guess where my Galactus was going to go. And I think that kind of stuff, like, that's just a really strong thing to bring to bear. Don't get married to the extremely telegraphed Symbiote Spider-Man Hobgoblin Galactus line. Yeah, it'll work, but honestly, I feel like I very rarely actually pulled it off, and it was much more valuable to introduce some confusion into it. Obviously, if that's what you have to do, you're gonna have to do it, but note that Symbiote Spider-Man is genuinely strong enough to pull this off, sometimes on his own. Like, this is actually a little bit harder to deal with than you might think, 
because your opponent having to calculate for both possibilities of the Galactus lane just leaves them with very few serious options a lot of the time. This is a strong card. Yes, there are defined weaknesses, but I do think that right now, Symbiote Spider-Man after this buff, he's pretty damn good here. And you do feel the additional points in a deck like this where one or two points can really matter. The Symbiote Spider-Man buff, the Galactus buff, you feel them. Wiccan is just excellent and has been for a while, but normal Wiccan decks with three or four one drops, three or four two drops, they've fallen by the wayside because of the associated deck building costs. You have to run too many small cards such that you are relying on basically maybe a Claw or a Legion and two six drops in order to carry you. You can't beat Hello with that output. You can't beat Bounce with that output. And so you end up with Wiccan decks that look like this that are much, I won't say worse built. They're not worse built, but they're a little bit more hacky. Like, it's just like, I'm going to do something on fire or on fun for you. And if I do it, you are so dead. And if I don't do it, well, I guess I don't really do a lot of it. It's the Mr. Negative Ification of Wiccan right now. That is what we're, that is what is happening to this archetype where it was this consistent mid-range deck, but in order to keep up with how tall the metagame is going, you see stuff like this, which is now much more similar in play pattern to a Mr. Negative deck. I'm not entirely sure how much I need to say about Hobby G Gob over here. Uh, the card is good. It obviously has synergy with Galactus. It's also just a fine card. And the fact that it is a fine card, like when we talk about those other Wiccan decks, like the gap between this deck's normal Wiccan plan and the other normal Wiccan plans that other decks that play this card has, it's, it's not very high. Like, oh, okay, we play a Hobgoblin instead of a Legion. We play a Green Goblin instead of a Speed. That's really not a big sacrifice to make. The actual thing that we're sacrificing is consistency from those other Wiccan decks because we have to be a Quicksilver deck. But that's not the end of the world because of the gains we get in power. And when you look at like this card compared to like a Claw or a Legion or whatever other card that those decks are playing, like, yeah, I can see you looking at that and being like, yeah, this card is worse. I get it. But it's not that much worse. And it synergizes with Galactus, and so this overlap makes it a very powerful thing to bring to bear. G to the A-L-A-C is your method of keeping things honest. And I realize that's a ridiculous thing to say to some degree, right? Like, what do you mean keeping things honest? What are you talking about, KM? The problems that other decks that like Wiccan have are problems with massive point outputs. Problems with Hella, problems with Bounce, problems with decks that do a lot of numbers and don't really give you a lot of options for interacting with them. Galactus puts those decks in a dumpster. That's his job. He's honestly more of a, like people are going to look at this as a Galactus deck. I think of it as more of this is what a Wiccan deck has to be in a world where all these other decks are hitting the point ceilings that they're hitting. You just kind of have to live with it because this guy is going to keep those point ceiling decks in line. If you're playing against a Hella Gamer, you actually can just do the Symbiote, Spider-Man, Hobgoblin, Galactus thing. You can just straight up do that some of the time. Like, it is a very powerful thing to do. And so, like, you have this ability to, I guess, police the garbage. There's so much with such a high point ceiling running around right now that you are going to be able to bring back down to earth with Galactus. Eliath has been a staple in every Wicked deck, and this is no exception. He even has more synergy with this because you can do like your early Galactuses into an Eliath type deal. They don't happen often, at least in my experience, but he's just a very good card. There's no reason to not play him in a deck like this. I also was considering like maybe we want to be a cannonball gamer at some point. It's a thought that had occurred to me, but I hadn't fully thought it out. It is something I considered, but I don't think I'd be cutting a lie to try it. He's just too damn good. One of the things you'll notice about this deck is that it's actually not far off in terms of the big threats that it can bring to bear from a Clog deck. And I realize you might be like, what are you talking about? I mean, like those Magic Red Hulk Clog decks, like you actually have a lot of the things that they have. You have your Goblins, you have your Red Hulk, you have your Eliath. Like, you have a lot of these, like, just big boy tools. 
And I think that's the thing that I really want to get across about this deck is like, once you do the Quicksilver turn three Wiccan thing, you are actually stronger than a lot of stuff, Galactus or no. And that's the point I'm really trying to make about this. Like once that happens, you're just doing a lot of really powerful stuff. And it's not always Galactus, he has a role, but you can absolutely win with just big dudes with attitudes. You can get that done easily. You're like, if Mr. Negative had eight more power, that's kind of what this Wiccan deck plays like. Like, it's genuinely quite strong. And I think that that is something that should be respected about the build. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for making it through that video. We're going to jump into some gameplay from here. Make sure you check out my boy TLSG, who actually cooked this deck up. I have been KM Best. You have been phenomenal. And I will see you in the next one. Playing a uh, demon. And they also, I think, didn't win by playing... Uh, that's a turn two Wiccan. They didn't win by playing a demon. They didn't win by playing a Shang-Chi because Tanya would go over. I got time. I got nothing but time, honestly. Sarah. They can probably... Oh, this is Tribunal. This is the Living Tribunal. Um, I'm going to stick around, I think, if I can get some cloggers down. I think I end up in an okay enough spot. I obviously have Galactus for the middle, if I ever get to him. And I've got plenty of turns to make that happen. Zero cost? I don't think they can get anything to zero cost. How do I not win? I don't think they can play a card on the map. Yeah. Just the easiest Galactus win of my entire life. It blows up the limbo. Just uh, absolutely 100% the freest thing anyone's ever done. They didn't have priority, so I couldn't get Living Tribunal or anything like that. They just lost. It's just, if we don't do it, like, look at this. If we get a Wick in here, we're, like, actually popping off, right? We do the Psylocke here so we can do Zabu Jeff in the worst case scenario next turn. Gets our extra energy. All right. We 
Nico Carnage. What are you? What are you? The world's saddest destroy draw? Maybe. Actually, is the world saddest destroy draw? That's crazy. And they've already used Carnage Deathlock, which means these goblins actually stick. Do you not snap here? I don't want them to know. I want to be able to see this animation. this and I'm like, damn, what's going on? Hella. <laughs> oh, no. You think it's Pokemon? Fascinating. The Pokemon game I can't get into, though. And I don't mean like, oh, I can't get into it. I mean, I literally can't get into it. Like, 100% literally, I cannot get into that game. Is my average viewer count usually a little higher than this? That's all I can tell you. You kind of hate to see it, to be honest with you. You hate to see a good game go that direction. Poor Marble Snap. I hate that I have to do this too. I'm gonna do it though. Oh wait, no, I don't even have the time to do it. Fuck, everything sucks. Wait, they can't play any cards. Or, I mean, they can play cards, but they won't do anything. We won. We actually won. Unless they have, like, a loot cage. Even if they have a loot cage. It doesn't do anything. They can't play. Their cards don't do that.
Oh, love it. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, they can't. Uh, no, his last video is destroy. Huh. Isn't there better with or without Galactus? That's an important question. <laughs> I don't know. Also, we have been getting a lot of Crimson Cosmos, and we fucking farm Crimson Cosmos. <laughs> Fuck Galactus, like, as soon as Brendan can't talk about it on the pod, dude. Holy shit, you, you solved it. You solved it. Holy shit. All right, so like, is this a snap? They're playing armor. I need to, I'm gonna need like a little more information here first, but. Armor Electro? What does this get us to? Gets us to 10 next turn? I don't know if that's enough for me to do the shit that I want to do. We'll find out. Maybe we just play for points from here instead of a Galactus scam. <laughs> yeah, this seems good. Is having 12 energy good? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me if 12 energy is good? I just... I just don't know. Sure, I can't die to like infinite Ebony Maw, right? They still lose the middle on the Ebony Maw. Yeah. It turns out that 12 energy is pretty good. I think kind of are. <laughs> I think I'm not saying this isn't Cove. It's definitely Cove. But it's like closer to real than I thought it would be. It's just we have the world's most telegraphed gameplay. There's nothing more telegraphed than us. Ow. How could you do such a thing?
How could he? Pray for me. No Shang, please. Actually, I hope that is a Shang. Ah, that'll work. It's just, it's gotta be, they, they gotta give power to the Null to win, right? So I lie at the Red Hulk lane in case of Shang, because that's where they go with the Venom, shit like that. Galacta. No, it's her name is Galacta, actually. It's slightly dumber, honestly. Did you win? No, they 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 had enough knowledge from the snipe to take it home. Unfortunately. How worse is Hella now? I'm not seeing a lot of her. Thank you, Godinez. I appreciate that. to undo it. Hopefully I mess up enough things here. Now we gotta think about it. Now he's got to think about it. All right, so what are we doing? I 
I'd imagine he can cover both. I'm doing this one, though. Like, he covers both with... Uh... Like, Sage mid or something. The question then is, can he cover the left, too? Yeah, I don't know. What's he have in hand? He's got a demon. I don't know if he can cover both. Huh. Hmm. 18 left. Demon. What have you? Demon arrows. I'm going for it. I'm going to Whole point is just this is a giant 50 50. It's just very hard for him to feel like. Because he actually. Uh. All right, let's try to galley alley act this all over this man. Okay, with this hand, I'm thinking it's bad. I'm thinking we're getting nowhere with a hand like this. I'm thinking I'm dead. Okay, I'm thinking I'm still dead, actually. Now I'm going to top deck the Wiccan and be sad. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> I want to actually die, bro. Oh, my God. That is just insane. We will present the you figure it out scenario. You have to figure this out. It's no longer my problem. can't make me learn anything, I will never learn anything. I... I mean... Which one we doing? We did it. Genius gaming. Play 